going on guys? I'm going to show you what I've been doing lately and uh, I guess we'll talk about it as we go through it. So today my game plan is I have some some like rendered fat and juice from my meal last night that we're going to use. Um, in regards to the bulk of the meal it's going to be I got some lamb shoulder and I have some very yellow amazing looking beef fat uh, that we're going to throw on the grill and there's no way I'm going to eat that much. I'm just going to, I left it out too long so I'm just going to grill it all at once. And uh, then we just have some salmon roe that you guys saw in my other video. I'll probably have a tablespoon or two of this. Um, I just did, I, I'm going to eat these later. I got some beef testicles but I'll do a separate video on that. You guys are fucking, like, I thought I was crazy before I made this YouTube channel and some of the stuff you guys tell me to do I'm just like, you know, I've already crossed over the line so I'm not going back, right? But that beef fat, guys, you know, half of it looks good that I get, half of it doesn't. So most of it is like, like, this is still good. It's not like super dark, like yellow carotenoid fat. Like, it's not all like that, and it, it never will be. Like, it's so from certain parts of the animal, it, it stores more of the carotenoids. It's softer and stuff. So uh, most of my fat is not as pleasant as this. And uh, this is like, dude, this is, this is so soft. It's so, it's so good. It's ridiculous. You know, best case scenario, this tastes like, um, this tastes like butterscotch. This actually tastes a bit like the packaging, unfortunately. So I'm going to go outside. I'm just going to, I'm going to throw this stuff on the grill real quick. Just get a sear on the outside. And, you know, one part of the reason I do that is because, you know, a lot of this stuff was packaged in plastic before. And it has this, like, this off taste on the outside, as well as the factor of, removing any cross-contamination bacteria problems. So, although I do eat certain foods raw, for the most part, unfortunately, living in our modern world, it's not like I can just, uh, I mean, I, I could pick up lambs and start breaking down my own animals, but guys, I'm crazy, I'm not stupid. I'm not gonna sit in my garage, sorting my guts out, getting attacked by flies with a saw, breaking down a lamb every day. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't care what you guys say, I'm not doing that. So, uh, this is what I'm doing now. So let's go outside and I'll show you guys my grill setup. So this is my own, my own pillar of hell I have in my backyard. I take a gas grill, I laid some grates, some old grates on the burners, and I put a bunch of charcoal and wood on those grates, and this gets really hot. One time I accidentally left this closed, and it was well over a thousand degrees in here. Uh, safe to say, this is like a furnace. So guys, I do not condone doing this. I'm just showing you how I create a fire relatively quickly with high heat and good flavor. I got some cherry wood chunks in there with the charcoals for the heat. And even though I'm only going to grill this food for like a minute or two on each side, almost every day I got like 15, 20 minutes of residual heat left on the grill. So I try to cook some stuff for my parents too, but uh, it doesn't happen all the time. And word of warning. Never put fat on a grill, and this is why. I mean, I like to have, I like to have a little bit of flavor on the outside of the fat, but fat is literally fuel. It will literally ignite. See? See how fast this is burning? This will just engulf in flames completely if I leave it on for any longer. So that's all I do with the fat. And I like doing that first because it gets, you know, it lubricates the grates, it gets the flames going. So then I'll put the meat on, but this lamb is already so fatty that uh, it's not really a concern. This is a lot of meat. I don't know what I'm doing with all this. I don't know if I could eat this in two days. Oh well. Oh guys, let me know if you want like a steak ASMR video where I'm just like, like 10 minutes of me flipping steaks. I don't know. I know it's windy out here. I'm sorry. I don't know how that's affecting the microphone right now. I'm assuming it is. Uh, But I, I try to be really careful with these uh, these lamb chops because if I leave these on for like more than a minute or two on each side, they'll they'll overcook past the point that I like them. So although I want to get as much flavor on the outside as possible, I'd rather have a little less flavor and have them raw in the middle. And, and I'm just going for like a little browning, guys. Like nothing too crazy. Um, like, if you guys go on my Instagram and look at some of the crusts I've gotten on steaks in the past, I mean, that is like culinary excellence, but I don't do that every day. 
Um, the, the amount of fat that I just cooked on the grill, that's actually probably not enough fat for this amount of muscle meat. Normally I would cook more fat. I just, um, I guess I just went a little lighter than usual today. Usually I try to keep the fat really high so I'm, I'm satiated and I save money too because the fat is cheaper. And sometimes, and like, I just killed the gas, but this, this fire will be hot for another hour or so. So it's literally, you know, it's so much wasted fuel, but, you know, what are you gonna do? So actually, I completely forgot about this plate. So I'm gonna just throw this in the oven to warm it up, and we'll actually eat on this plate. Uh, this is actually unusual. I don't usually have a plate of like fat and juice like this, but what happened was, yesterday I accidentally left my food in the oven for like two hours, and it was really well done and well cooked, and that was actually the first time I've had well done meat in like two years. It was okay, but I didn't really enjoy it, but I had all this rendered fat and juice that I saved from it for today. So this is not usual, but this is just what I have today. So I haven't, I haven't done a video yet on proper food storage, but I'll just do something real quick. For this beef fat, uh, you could do two things. You could cut it into portions and refreeze it, or what I like to do is you could wrap it in paper towel and put it in the fridge if you don't want to use paper towel. Because what the paper towel does is it, it forms like a really... Um, and the paper towel is better for muscle meat. For this, this meat, th uh, this fat though, I would just take some plastic wrap, wrap it up as tight as you can, put it in the fridge, and go through it as quickly as possible, preferably within a week. I have my bowl of salmon roe, and this has been in my fridge for like two weeks now. <laughs> I added a bit of salt to it so it wouldn't get too funky, um, and I don't think it's funky at all yet. And this is, I usually do this, so like, I'll put my meat in the oven, I'll let it warm up for a bit more, and then I'll, I'll have like my liver or my salmon rub, or if I have a food that I don't really enjoy too much that I usually just swallow down, um, I'll do this first, like this. That is like, that is so tasty. Something about it's sitting in the fridge for a week and a half and fermenting a little bit. The iodine flavor is reduced. It's really pleasant, almost has this like this sweet nuttiness to it. And this rich cholesterol -y texture. I have a whole video on salmon roll talking about it. Uh, that was, I think, last week. And this is literally on its own, the t one of the tastiest things you could put in your mouth. It's insane. And it's literally the best food for you. Literally the highest amount of vitamin D3, fat soluble vitamins, uh, omega-3, DHA, super high in DHA, like five times higher than the next best food. And not only that, I mean, yeah, liver might have more vitamin A and vitamin C, but this is complete nutritional profile, A, C, D, E, K, and it's tasty. It has, it has every like so many flavorful elements and complexities. It has saltiness from being seafood. It has an iodiney flavor. It has this nuttiness from the richness of the cholesteroliness of the eggs. It has this salmon flavor. It's just so complex and extremely flavorful for an animal food. It's literally you cut it out of a fish, and now you let it sit for a month or whatever, and the flavors change and transform and it become, became even tastier sitting in my fridge so who knows how, how much more complex the flavors will get if I actually let it ferment and rot over a long period of time. Okay, so I don't think I want to film, like I'm not going to film me eating this whole meal. It might take me like 10-15 minutes but um, so here I have, have beef fat. I got this plate that's heated up that's full of like, this is actually marrow fat and some steak juices. So what I'll do is, you know, I'll take my steak, my lamb shoulder chop, I'll salt it, and this is a, this is a French Celtic salt, it's just one of the, um, I've tasted a couple different salts and I like this one the most. So I'll just, I'll salt my steak and then I'll, As you can see like the outside there's a slight sear on the outside but the inside is completely raw that's usually what I go for I get I get the flavor of the seared meat but I also get the texture that I like of the, the raw meat 
let me try this um let me try this beef fat so I don't know what's going on with the salt shaker sometimes um this gets it's when it's really humid out this I gotta like dehydrate the salt again it's a pain in the ass but looks like I'm gonna have to so it's a little bit of salt on that beef fat and let's try it I guess I should have tasted it raw So, beef fat always has a very subtle flavor when it's raw. So what happened was when I cooked it, now all I taste is like the flavor of the outside of the grill on the fat, and that's all I taste is like salt and charcoal. So, not necessarily a bad thing, but when, when this is like raw and you eat it on its own, it's very mild, of course, obviously very rich because it's fat, and it has this, sometimes it has like a subtle, like nutty, grassy flavor. And if it's like the, if it's like the best quality, it'll literally taste like butterscotch. It's it's insane. I had um, I've had beef fat like that in a, in some of my past videos, but um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna get a cutting board to to fix this up, and I'll I'll go through my meal, and then um, I guess first we'll talk about. So we got all those vitamins from this row. This is mainly for calories, maybe more omega threes, mostly just calories. The beef fat, same thing. You know, we're, we're always going for just small amounts of all the fat soluble vitamins through eating like a large amount of high quality foods. So uh, I'm going to, you know, particularly the beef fat is omega 3s and carotenoids, uh, vitamin A, and then lamb, pretty much the same thing, really. So small amounts of vitamin K2, but uh, I'm going to uh, finish eating this and then I guess we'll see how much I ate and uh, uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have another meal later today. I don't know. I didn't actually realize how many bones were in this. I literally bought like I had like two and a half pounds of these lamb shoulder chops and literally like, I think I got over a pound of bones here, so I'm actually going to end up going through all this, but. So overall this is like half a pound of fat and maybe like a pound and a half of meat. This is usually around what I normally eat, maybe, maybe I'll have like a little less of both most days, but for today since I cooked all this on. Um, you know, and it's a surprisingly less amount of meat than I thought it was. Um, 